There she goes. <laughs> there she goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, Anna? Yeah. She startled me. Oh, man. She's really racing. Off to the races. Go, Millie, go! Go, Millie, go! Go, go Millie, go! <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny. What a goofball. Oh, Millie. Are you okay? Was that a good run? Oh, man. It's really funny how she runs for all of like two minutes and then she's exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she doesn't need a, a lot of exercise, just a good burst, good energy burst. Oh, I know why all that stuff was in the pool today. Why? Because the lawn people just came this morning. They blew, it was all lawn debris. Because look at the screens. Yeah, that's why. Daddy! Hello, everyone. We are outside getting some fresh air and some pool time and um yeah just trying to <laughs> trying to be out of the house for a little bit we've been we've been cooped up in there other than just briefly coming outside so and our stuff is still all packed up from the hurricane we haven't unloaded everything back out yet Aaron's like, why don't we just leave it there until hurricane season is over? <laughs> Guess what amazing thing I can do? What amazing thing can you do? Okay, I'm going to swim over to the skimmer shirt and then I'll show you, okay? Okay. This is one amazing thing. Okay. Give me my <laughs> Linda says, I have a feeling Dolly would jump right into the pool. Yeah, we're we're actually really glad that Jamelli doesn't because otherwise we'd we'd have to be drying off a dog constantly. Okay, this is the amazing thing I can do. Oh, it does feel good to be outside, buddy. The sun feels really nice. Tread water. You tread in water? Man, you're just learning all kinds of new stuff this year. You can swim across a pool by yourself. Hold on. You're treading water. You're staying upright. I'm so impressed <laughs> with the amount of skills that you have taught yourself in the pool this year. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Karen says, and the dog hair in the pool isn't fun. Yeah. I imagine that would be a lot harder on the filter. A good lift. Susan wants to know, how bad was the hurricane where you live? Any damage? No, we just ended up, because it because it veered, so like 11 p.m. the night before it made landfall, it moved even further uh, west. And so it went more northwest and straight up into the little curve of the panhandle where the panhandle like meets the peninsula. And so because it went more west away from um, the east side of Florida and Orlando is kind of in the middle of Florida, but it's over to the east side slightly more. Because of that, we ended up just getting the banding, you know, like when the hurricane spins, it's got these bands that come off the back side of it as it's spinning and, and they spin off these like thunderstorms. We just got that. And it, it wasn't even as intense as the thunderstorms that we typically get in the Orlando area on a daily basis. So it ended up being a whole lot of nothing yeah, for us. Oh, but man, it hit the, hit the coast with some strength when it got up there. That's for sure. It, had, it, it ramped itself up to a category three by the time it got up there. <laughs> so yeah, we did okay around here. I don't know of any, um, I don't think there was a big power loss or, or wind damage. Like I said, the storms were pretty, 
pretty par for the course for this area. Rebecca wants to know how we feel. Anna, how are you? Come over here, give us an update. How are you feeling? Looks like it missed over there. No, Donna, she doesn't want to jump in. She doesn't like the water. She has zero interest in getting in okay. the water. How am I feeling? Yep, how are I'm you fine. feeling? How, wh back up, now you're too close. I'm give us a good. Give us a, a, a feeling health health update. Health update? How? Well, like, do you have any symptoms left? Are you mm, feeling I mean, much better? How's your energy? Cough, sneeze. You still have coughing and sneezing? Yeah, I'm runny nose sometimes here and there. Stuffy nose sometimes here and there. How's your energy? Sore throat. Oh, your throat's still sore? I keep clearing it a lot. Oh, you do. Mm -hmm. I have heard you clearing your throat, yes. So you do still have some symptoms? Yeah, not, but, not a lot, though. But are you feeling super tired? or? Mm, kind of. Okay. I do pass out pretty easily, so... <laughs> You mean fall asleep pretty yeah. easily? <laughs> you gotta be careful with that. Last time we said you passed out next to the pool because you fell asleep, people thought you actually passed out. <laughs> okay, so so she's feeling okay, but seems to still be having some symptoms. But you know, she's a she's a kid, so she's powering through it. I'm very thankful that it did not move into her chest like it did for me. We don't have to deal with any respiratory gunk because that's where I get really concerned with her because the primary concern with Anna getting sick is that her her lung chest muscles all of that is weak and she has a really hard time getting mucus out of her lungs and last time she was sick in 2019 at the end of 2019 it did move into her chest and I had to take her to the hospital twice to be suctioned because she couldn't get the gunk out and she was choking on it and it was very scary so that's always been my big fear with us catching this virus is that you know it moving into her lungs Aaron what about you uh, tired um, my eyes still hurt I have congestion in my sinuses football phlegmy mostly energy level yeah So, would you say you're feeling better from, from like, a week and a half, uh, week ago? Yeah. 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 I would say I'm probably in somewhere in the 70 percentile somewhere. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. I'd say I'm, I'm in the 70. You're in the 70 percentile? Yeah, I guess I could say I'm around there, too. I, I agree. I'm still feeling pretty tired and run down. Uh, you can tell by my voice that it's still kind of in there. Um, still makes me cough, but it feels like it's drying up, if that makes sense. Like, it feels like it's maybe working its way out, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, so, I think that we're all getting better, I dare say. That I think we're all... Not as fast as... Progressing. I would like, but yeah. Right. No, because for me, today is like what day eleven, day twelve. Like this is this has not been a short, quick, and easy thing. This has been a long, drawn out process. And I was actually feeling better than I am today a couple of days ago. But then, you know, they they found that there tends to be like this resurgence of the last bit of last little, you know, hurrah. So that's definitely what I feel like we're experiencing. Thank you, Martha. Yeah, it feels really nice to be outside in the fresh air, in the sun, in the water. Um... definitely feels nice Sydney says she had a two month recovery her and her daughter yeah that's what I've been hearing from most people like the vast majority of people have said 
yes, this is, you know, not easy. It's not just a cold. It's not just a flu. It took me weeks and weeks to feel better. Lingers. Uh, lingers on for a long time. Like that's the vast majority of people. And we've got thousands upon thousands of people commenting. Most people have said that it's much like what we're experiencing where it's not an easy thing and it is taking quite a long time to get better. So I think, I dare say that's the norm. And, and the people who are blessed enough to only feel like they've had a cold for a few days are the odd ones out. <laughs> yeah Chelsea I hear that from a lot of people too that long after they're even recovered and better they still for months and months later have have side effects and lingering symptoms like inability to taste or smell or fatigue or something like that Mary says, how do you think you got it? I think we got it at Anna's well visit. The timeline matches up. It seems that somehow, even though, you know, I, I think that we let our guard down at her well visit. And I think that uh, normal, <coughs> normally <coughs> Aaron and I would sanitize our hands the second we got back to the car. We didn't, we didn't do that. Room. We wouldn't have waited in the waiting room. We would have waited in the hallway. We didn't do that. So that it, like going into the giant petri dish. Exactly. Yeah. We <laughs> let our we guard did. down. We went to her well visit. We didn't, we weren't as cautious as we normally would be. And, and there you go. Boom. After, yeah, after almost five years of, you know, literally four, I counted it, it was four years, eight months, and 23 days. We had zero illness from all of the precautions and everything we were doing. And, the, you know, we let our guard down and we paid for it. You know, I also think it might have been from the sea turtle place when we went into the too inside. Long. No, of the it was too long ago. I talked to the doctor. And, and Daddy and I talked it over quite a few times, and the timeline matches up perfectly to your doctor visit. I mean, not, not to say that we didn't, you know, because I did have a sore throat after we got home, but that could have been just the being in the car for so many hours with the AC and then reacclimating to home. <coughs> because I was fine the next day. That happened to you the time before last year. Right, right. That was a more typical, like... This is just reacclimating into our air conditioner and stuff. No, Pam, no one at the doctor's office except for us had masks on. We were the only ones. The doctor did when she got up. Yeah, the doctor was kind enough. She came into the room without it. She was kind of more than six feet away from everyone. And then when she went to move in to take Anna's vitals and check her, she did put one on. So that was nice of her. But I think, I really think it was out in the waiting room. There were Lots sick children on the other side of the waiting room. And he was like, well, go wait on the well side. But there was a pretty small waiting room. So I don't yeah. think you with something that travels through the air, that doesn't matter. It reminds me of, remember, like back you know, in the 80s, before the 80s, when you'd go to a restaurant, you'd say, would you want to go to the smoking section or the non-smoking section? Right. Yes. You still smelled the smoke exactly. in the non-smoking section. They shouldn't have ashtrays over there. Exactly. <laughs> no, that's a, you're exactly right, because that's what it is. Yeah. It's in the air. It's yeah. airborne for up to three in the hours. Same room, a small room. Too. Exactly. There was no yeah. ventilation or air movement keeping everything on the quote-unquote sick side of the room. So People think that it's, the virus is not airborne. Well, it just comes from touching things. <laughs> it can, can get it from touching things we too. Might have touched something too. And we might have touched something. And like I said, we didn't sanitize our hands. So pressing the elevator buttons. And <coughs> it's just sad because it's not like you know if you get a a, a cold or the flu, like yeah, you're sick and it sucks. But you get over it, and you don't typically have lasting damage from it. But with this virus, there's such a high, a high instance of lasting damage 
to your body that's that's the sucky part and I feel you know I worry about Anna because like Aaron and I were able to take the antiviral medication which stops the replication of the virus and tends to try and halt some of that lasting damage but they they won't give it to children so so I, we can't do that for her so who knows what you know long-term effects it could have on on her body and she's just little she's got a lot of life to live so oh the whole thing just sucks but hopefully we are you know on the mend and um Hopefully, if we go back to our usual precautions and we can avoid we can avoid getting it again, you know a lot of people have had it numerous times. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, I keep coughing, you guys you take a drink. It just makes me sad. Yeah, hi, hi. because it's almost like Groundhog's Day, where like the groundhog comes out, is it safe, and then oh no, it saws it, see his shadow to go go back in again. Yeah. You know, it's it's sad, but it's this is what everybody has to live in now. This is this is what it is these days, and I'm sure it won't be the last one. I'm sure there'll be some other new thing at some point. You know, this is just anyway. We are outside, and it is sunny and beautiful, and. We're still here to enjoy it, and um, it get feels nice. D. Yep, get some vitamin D, some fresh air. Thank you, Sheila. Kathy, I haven't heard, I haven't received an update on the power chair. I am hoping that we will get one this week because they were waiting for that part uh, to finish it. And they said that it was going to take two weeks. And two weeks would have been like at the end of last week or potentially with the uh, with the holiday maybe early this next week. So I'm, I'm thinking we're going to hear something this week. They should have that part and be able to, to finish it up and get it in the mail so that's exciting. Oh, and something else. Um, I spoke with uh, Neuropsych. We have scheduled, um, well, it's going to be this month. We don't have an exact day. They're going to email me the exact day, but sometime mid-month this month, Anna's going to have her ASD evaluation. So I'm very, I'm very excited that we were able to find a really wonderful doctor um, I talked to her on the phone actually on Saturday, yesterday, she called me, which was really cool. And we had a whole discussion about Anna's um, condition and her physical limitations and how that might affect her test. And um, they can adapt it. She, she gave me the name of a new book that, that she's highly recommended that I purchased off of Amazon. Um, and she's actually going to be able to test me in November. But, she, but they're going to be able to do Anna in just a couple of weeks. So that feels really nice to have that, like, on the horizon and, and kind of situated. Because that's been weighing on us since the beginning of the year. Unsure how that was going to work and, you know, if we were going to be able to do it. And, all you know, how it was going to be paid for and all those things. I can't wait to turn eight. You can't wait to turn eight? It's coming up fast, girl. <laughs> September, uh, two months you have two more months. You're going to be eight. Four months until the end of the year, though. I know. I know. Oh, Jamelly. I need to groom Jamelly. She needs a paw trim and a, and a hairbrush and a trim and a bath. Okay. So, um... Yeah, I think I'll trim her up out here, and then tomorrow I'll give her a good, give her a shower, and then she can run around out here and dry off. I what slipped. are you doing? <laughs> well, I slipped. <laughs> Jennifer says, man, I would love to be in the pool today. Come on over. We've got room. No, actually, I take it back. Don't come over. I don't want to get anyone sick. 
Don't don't do that. Don't come over. Nobody come here. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Bear, what are you doing? What are you doing, funny girl? And Anna's got tomorrow. You you you're really getting back into the swing of things. Are you gonna be ready for this? No. <laughs> Tomorrow's gonna be a, a little bit easier because it's a holiday. You only have I think one or two classes, but do her, uh, Tuesday, ma'am. She's got to do her voiceover. It's not a voiceover. Oh. Commercial. Mm -hmm. Commercial audition. Yeah, Anna's got a commercial audition. We have to do that today or tomorrow. Not a voiceover. Yeah, we got to get back into the swing of things. I feel like we've been laying around for like a month. <laughs> it hasn't been that long, but it feels like it. And I, and I feel like I got to get back on the, the horse and start getting some stuff done again. Last night we had at 2.30 in the morning some interesting sounds out here. We were, Anna and I were sleeping on the couch and uh, Aaron was in the bed on the other side of the house and I was woke up out of a dead sleep by, uh, I don't know how, if, if what I can say on here, or what will get dinged. I was woke up by pew pew, yeah, pew, pew, lots of pew pews um, from shooters. two different, two different, Pew pews. Just say it sounded like a, a cop, some robbers, or a cowboy. No, oh, it sounded like scary. Is what it sounded like. It, sounded like the it was. Yeah, it was like, very close. One of them was pew very pews. close. The other one sounded like maybe it was across the lake, but it scared Jamelli. There were two of them. Not one pew pew, two pew pews. Jamelli came running over and wanted confirmation that everything was okay and. <laughs> I think I think I sent it to my son who is a little more knowledgeable just because of his experience with like he knows a lot about military and he's you know he's, he's a 25 year old boy so he's played a lot of the uh, video games and you know friends who do stupid things and whatnot and he said that he thinks it's just somebody who was up late being stupid and probably yes. aiming at the lake and, and or, or two people really but I, I you know that's not something I want to hear <laughs> it's not something I want to hear from my home and uh, no Karen it was absolutely not fireworks not even this was nothing like fireworks this was definitely pew pews absolutely definitely Miami Vice yeah, somebody was either trying stuff out or just, you know, generally screwing around. <laughs> but it's just scary because you never know, you know, if they're, how, how, you never know how much they're swinging it around if they're really. Strays. Right. Yeah. If they miss and it goes in a different direction. Yeah. Well, Sue, the last thing that I want to do, if it's legitimately someone or two people having an altercation, the last thing I want to do is to call their attention to my home um, as they watch the uh, police show up and then come to our door to talk to us about it. So that wasn't that wasn't my first instinct. Definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. I, I really hope, I really hope this is the upswing. Because we had a little bit of an upswing the other day, and then it went back down again. So I'm hoping this is the up upswing. Are you my 
I know, Pat. I, I, I am. That's that's why I really hope they were aiming at the lake. Uh, that's my my, you know, main thing is I hope they were just like, oh, I have a new toy and aiming at the lake. Oh, uh, maybe I've had a few beers and let's have some fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not, not what you, like I said, not what you want to hear. We're gonna go to the step in the deep end. So that kept me. I, I had just fallen asleep too, and then I was up for like another few hours after that because I was a little freaked out. Charlene says, "Don't overdo it. You're gonna get extra tired again." <laughs> it feels weird it, it feels really strange for some reason being out here like we really haven't had a lot of swimming days this summer uh, the pool was very cold for a long time and then we were away and and then when we got back we finally got to get some some swim days in but for whatever reason it it almost feels like we shouldn't be out here at this point like it should be too late which it will probably in the next month or so start to get too cold again. Oh, Pat, you're in Redford. Yeah, I bet you do. Yeah, that definitely those suburbs north and, and west of Detroit, I'm sure. It's not something that I've ever lived among. Um, in all the places I've lived in, Allen Park, I've lived in New Boston, I've lived in Trenton, I've lived in Ann Arbor, um, never in any of those places did I have that backdrop sound. It was, pew -pew. it was, yeah, no <laughs> recreational pew pew, it was typically, um, crickets and frogs and, uh, birds and airplanes and uh, maybe some neighbors hollering at each other, but never, never, never yeah. <laughs> I know, Donna, I love the crickets too. That's the spring peepers are like, I, I miss the, the things that I miss the most from Michigan are like the spring peepers and the cider mills the <laughs> and Bob Joe's. Uh, the frogs here sound weird. Yeah. They don't sound cute. It sounds. I don't know what it sounds like. I came across a TikTok uh, video. Someone, I think they were in Pennsylvania, but they had the cicadas all sounding off, and uh, I just sat and listened to it like three times over because I was just like, "Oh my gosh, this just sounds like home." We got some of that here. Very little. We don't. We do not. You don't. You don't understand, California boy. <laughs> <laughs> you need to spend some time in Michigan in the spring and the fall outside and hear the nature sounds. There's nothing. There's nothing like it. It's just wonderful. It's so. It's the most relaxing sound. Just hearing the crickets and the frogs and the cicadas and I miss it. What does it sound like in San Francisco at night? Cars, traffic, people? Depends on where you are. In some places in the city. But if you go outside of the city, Mommy, say there's me. more like a um, vacuum. <laughs> just the wind in the trees. It's very relaxing. The wind in the trees? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Let me sit on your leg to save myself from that vacuum. Okay, come here. I'll get you. I got you. I got you. Come here. Hurry. Save me from the vacuum. <laughs> I think it's going away. Ugh. Is it gone? Are you safe? Yes. All right. Move along, child. There was a red on my feet. I didn't like it. Did you pull it away? Aw, oh, Cindy says, I miss Michigan, too. Can't wait to get back home. I'm currently in Texas. I want to go back home. I miss the cider mills and the color of the leaves changing. Me, too. You know, I had no idea how much I would miss the season change until I got away from it. 
and it, it, I have to admit like it's really nice to have weather above 70 degrees most of the year and like any time because you know I got sick of the winters and, and there's like six months of the year in Michigan where it's cold it's cold and it's dark and, and you can't just walk outside unless you like that sort of thing which I don't so it's nice here that you can just walk outside whenever and typically in shorts and sandals but um, you do miss the the leaves changing color and the crispness of the fall air like you can't just the one of the big things that I miss the most living in Florida is in Michigan I hardly ever ran my air conditioner like maybe there were like two weeks in the summer where it would run and then in the winter you'd have the heat on but for most of the year the windows were open and all of the fresh air just comes in through the screens and it fills the house with fresh air and I love that I love the fresh air and you can't do that down here. You cannot open up your house down here or your house will mold. You will grow mold inside your home because it's just too humid. So you have to have the AC on 24 seven round the clock year round in order to regulate that humidity. Hey. Yes, Lisa, Aaron did fall on the ice when we were in Michigan. <laughs> Cause he's not, he's not from those parts he's not a, he's not a proper penguin child he doesn't know how to walk on ice they don't have that in in the bay area there he goes. No. okay here we go i'm this one back to mommy watch me i'm watching ready Three, set go Look at her go, man. The improvement in her swimming since we've been here is just... This This is going to be the saddest part of moving, is not having the pool for her, because it's I been so it. good. I know! You did great. Thanks. It's been so good for her. This pool has been so good for her. And we knew it would be. That's why we were hoping to find a place with a pool, but... We go back north and there's just nothing. There's nothing like because this. If they have a pool, it's just gonna freeze in the winter. Well, even in the lower, like I'm just, I'm not just talking a few hours north. Even in the state here, you got grown. Yeah, there's there's less, but there's still some. But once you cross the line into the other states, it seems like they're fewer and further between. Not a normal feature of a house. No, not like, like here in Florida. It's like most, it seems like most of the houses have, or at least most of the bigger homes have pools and cages. I don't have that stuff as much out the outside of Florida. No, Tammy, we're not going back to Michigan. Um, I, don't, I don't think that's going to happen. It's too far, too far of a move. <clears throat> thank you, Mary. I am feeling better today. Thank you. Juanita, I've been looking all over there, man. I've been, I mean, granted, you know, we're looking for a rent and not a, not a own, but, um, I've been looking all over and I've seen very, very few with, with their own pool. Most of them have like community pools in the, in the subdivision, but not like a personal pool like this one. So, I don't know. I keep looking, but I've looked at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of places, and only like two <coughs> had a pool. Yeah, Tara, I think we we have to. I, I don't think that we can afford to continue staying here. The prices just, uh, you know, our rent went up six hundred dollars a month this last lease renewal and that was that about that that extended us to the max of what we can swing and the the health insurance is so expensive here so 
Um, Pat, we're not in a position to, to buy it. I wouldn't want to anyway because I don't, we don't, we don't know where we want to stay. I'm not going to purchase a home in a place where I don't want to be permanently. Um, in order to prevent, um, like capital gains, you have to stay in that location for, what is it, three or five years or something after purchase. And I'm not interested in committing to one place just yet for that long of time because I don't know where we want to end up. We've got a lot of things to consider. Aaron's got parents aging on the west side of the country. I have parents aging on this side of the country. Um, I don't think that it's smart for us right now to plant roots and be stuck in one place. I think that we have to be a little more flexible. So, Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, yes. Um, Can I help you? Um. Uh, well, I would like for you to watch me swim in Mexico. That's okay, Cheryl. That's that's what you do when you live in a home. You put your money into it to to make it nice. That's that's to be expected. It doesn't matter. It'll be nice for the next person, too. And the next home we get into, we'll put our money into making that nice, too, because we want it to be our home while we're there. We want it to be nice. I mean, that's the way I've always been with my rentals. I'm, I'm not going to treat it like it's someone else's home. I'm living there. It's your the touch. Right. It's I'm the caretaker. Touch. It's your touch it that makes it whole. Mm hmm You have to be somewhere at least Ella's rule is you have to be somewhere for at least 24 hours before you can actually do your business. Yeah, that's what Ella said, huh? Yeah, what's you, that? <laughs> she, said, she said you have to be somewhere at least 24 hours before you count it as having visited there. You can't just pass through Where like an airport. I don't remember. Was that a video we saw? Or were you talking about? It was, she was live. Oh, she was on the live. Uh, and we were watching her live the other day. She said that. That's a good rule of thumb. Yeah get behind that. I thought a couple of people and mommy say it's a good pool. Yeah. Uh, Susie, I've never heard of it. I, I, is that like near the Atlanta area? I don't know where that is. What? It sounds like if it's an island, it sounds like it's somewhere on the coast and we're not looking to be on the coast because one of the things that we would like to get away from is hurricanes. <laughs> 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 oh yeah Catherine it was a huge increase but you know it was legitimate like at first I was a little miffed because I was like why would you do that to us and then I looked it up because you can see tax records they're public record I looked up the taxes and it was legitimate his taxes legitimately went up 22 percent so it, it wasn't something that he could avoid um, so, you know, we were like, well, we can't, we're not going anywhere now, but it really, it really put a strain on us this last year. Like that $600 is, is a huge difference. And now I have student loan payments coming. They're going to come back due now. They're, they're stopping the deferment of the student loan payments. So that's going to be another $300 a month. And, you know, it's just, I don't have a lot of places to cut any more corners. We've kind of reduced everything that we can possibly reduce. Like the bulk of our, our monthly expenses is rent and uh, health insurance. And then there's utilities and um, food and Anna's classes. We, we really don't spend extravagantly by any means. So... The only the only thing that's left to do is reduce reduce our our monthly expenses, which means reducing our health insurance costs and reducing our rent. And unfortunately, staying here, the rent's not going to go down. It's probably only going to go up. So you know, these are the decisions that you have to make. This is life. This is part of life, and we knew. We knew we weren't going to be here permanently. Um, we just we were hoping like three to five years. We've been here two. Why? Go get a drink of water. But it's not just us. It's the entire state is going through a lot of problems with insurance increasing. Um, 
rent prices doubling. People who have lived here their whole life are getting pushed out of their homes. Um, the cost of everything is, is just continuing to go up exponentially, even more than other states. And it's making it really hard on a lot of people to stay here. So it's just not a good not a good state to be in right now as far as that goes unless you've got a lot of a lot of money watch me bounce and then the insurance companies are pulling out they're not offering coverage anymore because of the hurricanes and because everything's getting worse so a lot of people in the state of florida are getting really screwed over yeah i understand it's happening everywhere like everyone's struggling but Statistically, if you actually look at the numbers, they, they can show, it shows you that Florida is worse than all the other states. It is worse the here right now. The increase is much more sharp. Um, and it, and it just seems to keep going up. It's not in some other, other states, it's starting to ease up. It is not here. So we just have to make, you know, decisions and and I, I talked to Anna about it and said how do you feel about moving how do you feel about possibly probably not having a pool but um how do you feel about those things uh, I don't I mean I could take it early with the pool I mean I like the pool I could but I could take it early but I don't care so She's, she's very, very flexible in accommodating this child, which is, which is really a blessing. Very adaptable, yes. Okay, so, mommy, yeah, She adjusts to things better than I do. Here we go. So, it's hop, skip, and jump. Away from having two million dollars. Okay. It's a... Well, Ruth, Ruth says you don't want to be too far from Paley. But the thing is, we you got to remember, all those years before we moved down here, we traveled from Michigan to Florida, so we're used to that. Um, but I don't want to be outside of driving distance. You're right because I don't want to have to get on a plane every time we need to come down. So, you know, I think we'll stay where it's within a, a reasonable driving distance. But you know, making the commute down is not. We're no stranger to that. So. Also, she doesn't have major surgeries too, so it's not crucial that we need to be here months on end. Right. She's not having any surgeries any coming up. She's not having any intense therapies. The only thing we have to come back down here for is her uh, annual maintenance treatment and braces every year. So. The only thing is that that is that I need to think about and look into more um, before we make decisions about going out of the state is that, like in Michigan, for instance, um, the Blue Cross Blue Shield, we had to jump through a few hoops in order to get Dr. Feldman as an in-network specialist because they want to say, well, you need to see someone in state and you have to basically prove that there's no one in state that can do what he does. And of course that's possible because he's only one of three doctors to begin with in the country, but it, it is difficult and they can give you a hard time about it. So that's the only thing that, you know, makes me nervous about See what again? Okay, this. Okay, it's a hop. Hop, skip, and a jump. Skip. <laughs> and a jump. Thank you, Gina. I okay. do feel I do feel better today. Thank you. It's only, mommy. It's only a hop, skip, and a jump, and maybe an eight. I know. 
It's coming up fast. I can't believe it. Where has the... And then guess what? In two years, you're going to be double digits. <laughs> like oh. Ella. Yes, like Ella. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I cannot have this money. Don't leave me. Get out of your face. Ruth, I, I don't I don't know anything for sure. We're just we're we're looking at options and trying to figure out how to reduce expenses. So that is definitely on the table. Yeah, Susie, that's what I found uh, definitely on the the half an hour or so outside. Of that area it's it's I'm, I'm continually shocked at the amount of house that you can get for a thousand dollars less than we're paying here every month like just continually like are you kidding me right now it's crazy. I mean not that we need a bigger space by any means we don't but it's just the the difference in the cost of the houses here versus the cost of the houses there is mind-boggling and then if you think about the fact that this house here that we're in if you go just three hours south would be twice as much per month just because of the area like that's even more mind-boggling I mean the I don't know I don't know how people well let's say do it the exact same thing is here there how much less would it be? What do you mean? Like if this house was If there, this house were there, yeah, how much it would probably be, be about $800 a month less based on what I've been seeing. Yeah, but but down but down there just um it's another 600, right? Just yeah, be double, double. Oh, Joanne, we don't we don't do politics on our site, so please don't don't go there. We will have to Unfortunately, we have to block people if they start going off about political stuff. We don't do that on our page. Let's let's keep it, and you know, no politics, no religion. Let's keep it to where everyone can remain friends. We don't need to. I did it. Uh, Fran says, "Didn't you previously say Dr. Feldman's training others to do what he does?" Uh, yes, he, he definitely is. You know, there's only so much one person can do. But I know that Fran said, I asked Fran about it this last time we were down there. And she said that he's been over. They have a, um, a place, a, a branch in Poland. There's a Paley in Poland. So he's been, he's been teaching um, surgeons there to kind of get it, you know. Because everybody has to come to the U.S. right now for proper AMC care. So I think that their idea is let's get it, you know, outside of the U.S. too so that other people can benefit from these surgeries and these treatments. Um, but yes, there, there's people and, and they they welcome. It's a teaching. Paley is a teaching facility. So they welcome any doctors who want to come down and, and learn and shadow them. In fact, when Anna had her double leg surgery back when she was three, uh, I had Anna's PT from Michigan come down and shadow um, the the therapy team. And he learned from them. He was there for a, a week learning all of their techniques for casting and for therapy and everything before we went back home to take care of Anna's rehab. So that's one thing that we would like to do with our nonprofit once we get it, you know, a little bigger and we have more hands on deck because right now there's only three of us, but um, we have three arms to our nonprofit. The first one is, is raising awareness and providing education. And we do that mainly through our platform here on our family vlog page. The second one is providing financial assistance to other AMCers and AMC families. And we have been doing that consistently every month since uh, October of 2021. 
And the third arm was always to um, help financially with doctors and therapists coming down to Paley and shadowing the team and learning and taking that information back into their local communities so that AMCers in other parts of the country can benefit from the care without having to travel all the way to Florida and stay here for weeks on end. And that part we haven't, we haven't um, been able to bring to fruition yet because we haven't grown to that point, but it's definitely something that we want to do. So, but yeah, Dr. Feldman's doing what he can. The, the therapy team there is doing what they can. They do um, presentations. They have videos and materials out there that the other doctors can see and Don't they have another location somewhere in another part of the state here? Just yeah, but they do it's a, it's only spine, Fran said it's spine care. Yeah, spine care. So the AMC care is only here. Oh, and okay. and then the facility in Poland. They also have one in uh Israel and but they have one in Abu Dhabi as well, I think. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard when there's so few specialists. I mean, that's why we we come. That's why we've been coming to Florida since Anna was three, because this is where where the team is. So you go where the care is, no matter what that means. You make it happen. And it's paid off in our case. Oh, Melly Bear. Mel, you want to go potty? Potty. Yeah. Want Daddy take you potty? potty? Yes, you gotta go potty. Okay, I get it. So, <laughs> Lorna says, Nana, is there an area you would really like to move to? I don't have any particular area in mind. That's what's been making it really difficult for Aaron and I to kind of figure out where to go, is that we don't have somewhere that we really want to move to we just we want to be kind of you know located in a good place to where um we can dr still drive to paley within a day for when we need to go down there we want to be close to you know a major airport not like hours away so if we have to fly somewhere you know we don't have that um we want to be somewhere where there's nature sounds and fresh air Again? Yes. You need a hair sweep again? Yeah. You should have had me tie your hair up before you got in the pool. Yeah, you should have. You can right always there. bend your head back and get use the water to get it off your forehead too, you know. Yeah. See? Well, it's cool. You didn't know that? No, I said it's cool because it feels it feels nice. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, anything you'd like for me, you'd like me to do? Yes, Yvonne, I think we're all feeling a little better today. Thank you. I know, Paula, it feels amazing out here. It's, it really feels nice just sitting in the sun. Is there anything you'd like me to show? Or have I done everything? I think you've done everything. I think we need to say goodbye soon. We've been on for a really long time. Do you know what I want for dinner? What do you want for dinner? Pizza. Pizza? A pizza pool party. Oh, I don't know about that. Why not? It's fun. Pizza isn't isn't very healthy healing food. No, but it is a pool party. <laughs> I but know, it's but pizza to go with it. I think your uh, I think your body still needs some good healthy fuel for for mending. I think pizza should wait until until we're we're more healthy. What else at Southwest P we eat? That's healthy. Uh, pasalad. What's pasalad? Pasalad and pa chicken. What's pa chicken? <laughs> Pepperoni chicken? <laughs> pasta chicken? Ooh, that sounds good. Alfredo <laughs> pasta? Chicken oh. crust, yeah, that's true. So we could do a chicken crust. We could do a Save chicken. We could do a chicken crust pizza, ma'am. Oh, 
Yeah, I'd love to. You'd love to? Yeah. You gonna make the chicken crust for us again? Yes. You did such a good job on except it last for, time. Except for adding Oh yeah, eggs. here it comes, here it comes. Do do. Do do. Do do, do do, do do, do do. Oh, goodbye. Do do do, do do. It's got, oh, it's turning around. It's going the other way. Now it's coming back. <laughs> yep, it felt you move. Oh, Daddy, look, it's don't coming come straight in yet. for us. Daddy, don't come in yet. The vacuum's attacking. When Mommy, when vacuums you. attack. I'll save you. <laughs> I'm gonna hold it. Oh Michael. Ah oh, babe. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell him when he gets back. <laughs> People kept saying drink drink pineapple juice to help with the cough, so I'll tell him. I'll tell him that it'll help. It'll help. Clear. It'll help clear up his his respiratory. <laughs> I have it, mommy. I think I think he'd rather cough his head off than than do that. <laughs> it's funny. He's so he's so pineapple pizza averse like not even an option oh Connie I've had so much honey and tea I've had so much I've had more honey and tea and and bone broth in the last two weeks than I probably have in the last year I've been living off of honey and tea and bone broth and chicken Oh, don't don't do that. That's that makes people nervous when you talk like that. You know, it's not a joke. It's not a jokey thing. You don't joke about stuff like that. It's trying to attack us. Hey, babe. <clears throat> are you coming? Are you coming back? I want to tell you something. Oh, Daddy brought your drink here. Have a drink. Oh, are you? He's gonna jump in. He's gonna jump and splash. <laughs> and Jamelli's gonna go wild. Oh, Jamelli, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? She goes nuts every time. Every time we jump in the pool. Did you take a drink? Yeah. Aaron. Um, Michael said that that there's a miracle cure. Uh, for your your like sinus and coughing and stuff that you have to have. What's that? Um, it's it's pizza with pineapple on it. Oh, <laughs> I guess I'm gonna perish then. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to make shrimp and pizza tonight. Yeah, Anna wants to make chicken crust pizza. I don't know. We'll have to see what we have for... I don't think we really have any pizza toppings in the house. Hi, mouth breather. <laughs> right, in my, right in my face. <laughs> That's a good call. Get a drink. <laughs> <laughs> like so, like right there. I look up and she's. <laughs> <laughs> what breed of dog is Jamelli? She's a golden lab. She's um, seventy-eight point three percent golden retriever, and uh, what does that leave? Tw twenty-one, twenty-one point seven percent Labrador retriever. Sue says, does he like pineapple, just not on pizza? Yes. I love pineapple. He does like I pineapple. I love pineapple. I love pizza. I don't love them together. Yeah, he won't. <laughs> he's, a, he's a pineapple pizza denier. Doesn't believe in such things. I think it's an abomination. <laughs> Cecilia says, how do you make chicken crust? It sounds delicious. Maybe we should do it on the live this evening. Who who thinks that we should make a chicken crust? 
unalive. I don't know if we do the whole pizza because it takes, you have to make the crust and you have to bake it for like 15 minutes and then you put the toppings on after. So the whole process takes like, like a half an hour, 40 minutes. But people do love it. They do. It is cool to, to show really how it's made. when they make it for themselves. Yeah. It's good. And it's not bad for you. Yeah. Well, maybe I could place a little grocery order and I could post, like, ingredients ahead of time. And yeah. if people want to join us and make it with us, you should, you should send the we could do a cook, to cook together. Stuff too. I don't know. It's a, it's a holiday, though. I don't know. People might already have plans yeah. for dinner. Probably already have their menu already set and we're already working on it already. Mm -hmm. What holiday is it? Maybe on Tuesday. But it's fun. It's fun to watch Anna make the crush. She's really the good holiday. at it. What is the holiday? It's Labor Day weekend. Oh. Labor Day. Which you should do some some uh, reading tomorrow and some worksheets and learn about what Labor Day is for, what it means, why we have it, why we why we celebrate it. Oh, Anita, I don't want to get into too much detail uh, publicly. That wouldn't be very smart. But not the coast, I can say that. Not the coast, because like I said, we're if we're going to move, we're going to move away from, from the hurricane zone. Yeah, because if we're at the coast, we'll get... <coughs> storm surge. Just like that? Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> storm surge. <laughs> Yeah, that stuff is scary, man. It's not good. Apex, on this hurricane, there was about 8 to 12 feet of storm surge. I know. Somewhere. It's very devastating. Oh. The areas that, that get it. Mm. Say inland. Don't go near the coast unless you want to get hurricane. Oh no, it's coming! Ah. Save me, mommy. Stop it! Stop saying save me and things like that. You gotta, you gotta learn pool etiquette. Don't say those things unless, unless you're serious. Scare the neighbors. All right. Well, we should probably go. This is we've been on for an hour. I like hanging out with you guys, but people get mad at us when they come back and they're like, I couldn't replay the whole thing because it was an hour long. We need to go now because we need family time. Yes, you're right. We do. We need family time. Well, come say goodbye to everybody. Tell them thank you for, for friend time. Yeah, I'm going to go in and then I'm going to um, say that and I'll back on Okay. What? <laughs> Was that English? Sort of sounded like English. <laughs> okay. Okay, what? See y'all either later, maybe, or tomorrow. See y'all later, Tater. Yeah. Bye! Bye!